RVA Hiker Girl here. So today I wanted to do a video for you guys on something that personally affects me when I'm out hiking especially and even sometimes at my workplace and that is heat, heat rash or hiker rash or prickly heat that goes by like all three names. And so if you're watching this video and you have issues with heat rash, this is not a video just for hikers. It's for people who have babies. If you are a runner or someone who works outside and you get heat rash, then maybe this video will help you. So I wanted to talk about what the heck is it? What does it come from and how I go about treating it and preventing it? All right, let's dig in and hopefully you can get some new info that might help you. So first of all, let me get this out of the way. I'm not a doctor or a physician. I don't have any medical training when it comes to hiker rash. These are basically my experiences and the holistic ways that I have dealt with it and how I, it's actually gotten better um, over time, over the years from certain things that I've been doing and I just wanted to share them with you. So what the heck is hiker rash or heat rash? So basically it is when you get a raised, splotchy, red, bumpy kind of rash um, on your body. I personally typically get it around my ankles at my sock line, but I've also gotten it um, around my waist and back where my backpack comes around um, to my waist, that whole section where the backpack is touching me. I have gotten it there before, but I typically get it around my ankles. So if you look at this photo right here, basically that is what my hiker rash actually looked like. And it occurs when the sweat glands on your body are blocked for whatever reason. It could be um, socks, pants, something is too tight like on your body. So I talked about the waist. Um, I've got it around my waist before backpacking. So that belt from your backpack that comes around and then it's across your shirt and that's blocking the sweat glands from being able to sweat. I just wanted to go through my story and share it with you and maybe you'll get some tips and things um, that might help you with your experience with hiker rash or heat rash. So the first time I ever experienced it that I can remember is when I did a hike up to McAfee Knob in the middle of the summer and basically um, it was upper 90s and it was super hot. 4.5 miles to the top of the summit and once I got up there I noticed this rash that was kind of underneath of my socks. I was getting a little itchy and that sort of thing so I pulled my sock back and I noticed I had um, this red bumpy rash that um, was underneath of my socks. I really didn't think anything too much about it. It really wasn't bothering me until I got down um, from the hike, finished it up. I think it was 8.2 miles maybe for the total hike. Got back down to the car, took off my boots and socks and put on my Crocs and that's when I kind of noticed um, how bad it was. It was kind of a deeper red um, at the time and I'm like gosh how if I got um, um, poison ivy or poison oak like how did that get through my socks so I wasn't sure and I had never gotten poison oak and poison ivy that I can recall in my life either so I was kind of perplexed about it wasn't sure so I did some research and I thought that it was probably hiker rash. So the next time that I went out hiking, I did my boots um, and my socks again, but after some um, just genetic research, um, I decided to try baby powder. Baby powder works for babies, right? You know, with preventing diaper rash. You know, I have kids myself, so I used it when they were young. So I tried that and that was horrible. It actually made it worse. And the reason why I think it made it worse was because I was putting another layer onto my skin on top of the layer of the socks and the boots and then sweating. Um, so then I tried gold bond powder after someone suggested that. Same result, um, did not uh, help at all. So then I decided I was gonna go buy some sock liners. Um, so I went to REI, bought those, and so sock liners are thinner socks um, that you put underneath of your hiking socks and they're supposed to be breathable and merino wool is also breathable um that didn't help either um, again it was another layer on top of my socks and boots and it just did not work for me so um, i decided that i'm a big lotion user and so i decided okay i'm not gonna put on any lotion 
the day before I the day that I do a hike because for me that made sense that that was yet another barrier um, to prevent my skin from actually breathing and I took it a step further um, the night before a hike when I got out of the shower that I wasn't going to use any lotion on that portion um, lower portion of my legs um, to try to help and actually through that um, that helped a little bit but what really helped me the most is when I got rid of my hiking boots I got rid of the tall socks and I switched to trail runners and then short merino wool actually darn tough uh, merino wool socks and that allowed the part of my leg above the sock um, to not get the hiker rash um, so yeah so that's what helped me um, the most um, at the time so the other things I still got it but I didn't get it nearly as bad as I did with the tall socks um, so what I also do and I still do to this day um, when I get done hiking I immediately take off my socks and my shoes and I let my feet dry out um, it takes all of that heat away from your ankle area or if it was a backpack you know take your backpack off frequently if you get it around the waist and your back as often as you can um, and let that area breathe when I go on super long hikes um, like when I did my AT section um, the Appalachian Trail I hiked the whole 40 mile section through Maryland um, over three nights four days um, I and that was in July or August um, it was so brutally hot I can't even tell you but I took my socks and shoes off every time I stopped for a water break and snack and yes it's time-consuming but I literally would take my socks inside out and I would lay them in the Sun to allow them to dry I would put my shoes and set them in the Sun and allow them to dry out as well and then let my feet air out and here is actually um, a picture um, of, of me doing that. And I always like put out my um, Thermarest um, Z seat and I put my feet on that so they wouldn't get dirty. And that really helped a lot. Now, with that being said, I did have the worst case I ever had recently and I know why it happened. So same shoes, socks, but it was August and I was doing a black pavement hike and the heat from the pavement on the shoe and the heat was coming up through the shoe to my ankles and was just giving me the worst hiker rash on top of the hot sun beating down from above on top of me and it was horrible that was the worst here's the picture of what it looks like um, the worst hiker rash that I ever had and that was with me taking off my socks and letting them air out it was just too much heat from that black top pavement that caused it okay so those were a few things on how you can prevent it um, but I wanted to go over a few more on things I've tried and I haven't tried on preventing and treating it so the first thing is try to go outside to do your yard work for a run or your do your hikes when it's earlier in the morning or late in the afternoon because it's going to be less hot during those times and you'll be less likely to get um, the heat rush now something um, somebody told me to try and I just never have because I've been a little skeptical is diaper rash cream um, because again they use it on babies um, but my thought process on diaper rash cream on why I don't think it will work is because if the baby powder and the gold bond powder and all of that didn't work um, to me that baby rash I mean diaper rash cream is going to um, Put a barrier on your skin again which is going to block those sweat glands and not allow them to breathe so I'm kind of skeptical but if you have tried the diaper rash cream let me know if it worked for you um, one of the other things um, that I researched online and read is that some doctors recommend using a benzyl peroxide um, cleanser that you would use on your face on your skin to use it in the area that you get the diaper rash um, cream and basically it's just to get rid of anything that's blocking those pores of your skin and just let it dry and go for it and see if that'll work I don't know I've never tried it um, but once you do get it 
So on top of taking off your shoes or backpack, if you get it on your stomach or your back, um, let the area of your baby t um, take off their diaper. Um, take off anything that is blocking that area from getting um, airflow because um, you want it to breathe. You want the skin to cool down. So if you can run cool water um, over the area, if you're hiking and you're near a stream, put your feet in the water and let the cool water just cool down your skin. Um, take a cool shower if you're at home working in the yard. Um, if it's a baby, um, give them a cool bath to see if it will help um, cool down the skin. Um, some people experience a lot of itching with their heat rash and you can use calamine lotion for that. My particular type of heat rash really isn't itchy at all, so I really have never had that problem to ever really use it. Um, hydrocortisone cream obviously for itching um, you can use um, Epsom salt baths and oatmeal baths tend to help calm down um, the heat rash I have done the oatmeal bath and I have done the Epsom salts it, Epsom salts more for sore muscles but I've also had the hiker rash and I think that that has actually helped um, even baking soda um, in your bath can actually help too um, and of course you can always use aloe um, for inflammation but my hiker rush typically lasts um, for two to three days and I literally walk around with these red circles around the bottom of my feet days and days after I've been hiking and I look ridiculous. It looks like I have a pair of red socks on. <laughs> so yeah, um, kind of crazy. So that is basically what um, what I have done over the years and what I have tried and what um, works for me but have you had higher rash before um, what have you done um, I always want my um, viewers and my subscribers to leave comments on what types of things have worked for you but so when other people come along and they watch this video they will not only have my information of what helped me, but maybe what helped you might be completely different than what worked for me, and that will help some of the other viewers. So chime in below and let me know um, what worked for you, and if you've gotten it, maybe you've gotten it in a different area um, outside of where I have on my stomach and my back and um, my ankles. Anyway, if this helped you at all or gave you any sort of beneficial information, leave me a thumbs up. And always, as always, thank you guys so much for checking out my video and supporting my channel and subscribing. It really means a lot. So anyway, all right, guys, until next time, see you around. Wait, oh my gosh, how did I forget this? So I got mail that I needed to open up and I know who this is from. Um, and I will link his channel down below. Senior Hiker 77 um, sent me some mail, so I just wanted to um, open that up. Ooh, so excited. So I got that Senior Hiker 77 sticker. Ooh, the pink one is really cool. Let me hold it up for you. Got that one. this one ooh, and another bigger one like this so if you have never gone to his channel so he has great reviews not really he doesn't call them reviews he basically goes through his experience of using a product real life when he uses it on the trail and hiking and he tells you what he has likes and what he doesn't like what he's currently using um, and that has changed over the years um, he has um, the land shan tents and he and people have problems all the time with staking them i did and i have one and he completely um, alleviated my problems with the tent um, with um, the staking issues i was having um, he gives just great little tidbits of information for hikers also for cooking he has great great um, things that he cooks that might be a little bit different than maybe something that you've ever tried which we're always looking for new food ideas I know I am so anyway check out senior hiker 77 on YouTube and check out his channel and give him some love and some and some support support can't talk today anyway guys until next time this is bye for real all right